I'm back, a little uh, airing there. That was pathetic. <laughs> was <laughs> well, you know. Once again, we're uh, you know one of the most professional webcasts. Happy Wirecast. Yeah, huh? there we go. Yeah. Hey, hey everybody. I'm Shane. I'm Chump too. I mean, he's <laughs> Chump one. Chump. I'm Lex. So, <laughs> right. All right. So, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, Stump th the throw, chump. throw your questions if that hasn't taken a dive. Love uh, it. Throw your throw your throw your questions out to Annalisa, and um, yeah, just you know, JJ, it. we are flying blind here, buddy. All right, That's so okay, any rate, um, all right, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so let's move over. So, stump the chump. Some, some people su suggested or sent some questions in. That's a good thing, so we could do our homework and not be too chumpy, I guess. No, uh, go ahead. But thank you for those, by the way. Any clever ideas how to deploy how to deploy PDQ to remote laptops that don't connect via VPN, Brett? Well, uh, at this at this point, hey Brett, um, you know whether it's VPN. I mean, VPN is VPN is not an absolute requirement. What is an absolute requirement if you want to use PDQ is to have access to the computers mm -hmm. via SMB, via you know file and printer sharing. Yeah, that's why a VPN makes sense because if they're remote. You don't want to have. You don't want to try to connect. You don't want to leave SMB open to the world yeah, on those to laptops. The world, so to the yeah. world, but I want to make sure to you know it might be a, a kind of pedantic to mention that. But yeah, at this point, because we we are agentless, uh, we have what's known as, uh, or at least what we call around here, as an on-demand agent, mm -hmm. and that means when uh, whether it's an inventory scan, a remote command from inventory, or a deployment from PDQ deploy, we contact that computer, those target computers. And then a service is created at that time on the computer, and that service then acts as that on-demand agent and is able to execute the uh, instructions locally. Mm -hmm. So it is running as a service, but because that doesn't have an agent beforehand that's calling us, we have to be able to see it. Yeah. And we use SMB, the server message block protocol, from Microsoft. So and then, if you don't have VPN, we certainly wouldn't recommend opening those up to the world. <laughs> Um, so at that, at that point, if it's remote, yeah, you're gonna, you're, you're not, it's not gonna work. Now, if you have a, remo a remote office, um, and you're not talking about home users or something, if you mm -hmm. have a remote office, bring, you know, then, then you might want to put a, a PDQ console out there, and then just remote to that console, and then you can do your deployments from that remote office. Yeah. If if the connection to, you know, you don't have a the WAN configured. You know, there's another option with that too, is you set up DFS at your branch office. And then do pull deployments. Yeah, that's if you have if you yeah. have your, your WAN set up properly. Yeah, that is true. All right. So the, the answer is the answer is um, pedantically yes, but it probably should logistic do it. logistically and best practice no. Yeah. Hopefully Maybe. that answers that one. Yeah, I have another question. I'm gonna let you read that one. <laughs> you have words with more than two syllables. Is that why? Well, there's a big word in there. I when I push an Adobe Acrobat Reader DC update. The default PDF handler gets knocked out. I've tried to either prevent Reader DC from becoming the default PDF handler or remotely and silently changing the default PDF handler of my choosing. I've tried custom command line parameters of the Adobe Customization Wizard. How do I get it to work with uh, DC Classic? Tanner. Hi, Tanner. Hey, um, buddy. Well, first of all, kind of the, the, the whole concept of a default application is a game changer in Windows 8, 8.1, and Windows 10 um, because uh, the way the way that those versions of Windows are are you know are uh, operate, uh, it's more difficult to change the default mm -hmm. application. Um, I think honestly, this is just this is just me thinking. Is I think that Microsoft was tired of of everybody changing the default um, browser browser from from, from IE. IE to anything. Yes, anything at all. So um, if you look at the release notes of a lot of different applications out there. Um, a lot of them, they'll say, hey, here's the command line parameter to set the, the default or not. But, um, you know, when, when it comes to Windows 8, it's, the user still has to choose. Mm -hmm. There are some ways around it. Now, with Adobe Reader DC Classic, um, let me take a peek. I think we've got that d -d -d downloaded. Mm -hmm. If not, we can download it. Nice thing is head to the package library, select it. There it is. Let's see what I've got here. So this, the, the Reader Classic uh, package from the package library, we don't use um, the Adobe Customization Wizard, as you mentioned. Because mm -hmm. um, once you do the Customization Wizard, anything you build with that is only meant 
according to the distribution agreement you have with Adobe to be uh, used within your organization. That's why we don't build. Yeah, can't do it without getting in trouble. So, so let me take a quick peek here. You'll accept, yeah. Um, yeah, we don't even we don't even change it there. So basically, if it is changing, um, the answer is I would go through. If you have Orca, you might be able to go through the MSI and see how you can um, turn that off. It sounds like you don't want it on, which tells me you probably don't have Windows 8 or higher on some of your targets um, because uh, by default there's a, a, a system Adobe or a, a PDF reader. Anyway, um, there's probably a way in the MSI. Uh, I, haven't ch I haven't checked it out. Generally speaking, um, when it comes to uh, you know, PDFs, like if you look at uh, Foxit from us, we will, if we see that the, the flag is there to set the default, we will do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, you know, our thinking is you're actually deploying a PDF reader. You probably that want you that. you want to use, yeah. Mm -hmm. You probably mm -hmm. want that to be your default. Once again, though, uh, it, it's a game changer when it comes to the Windows 8 or higher because the, the user still needs to make that decision. And that's kind of by design of the OS. So uh, I would go through, <clears throat> grab Orca, grab the MSI, and... and um, and take a little gander through that and see what you can find. There might be a command line parameter as well. Uh, I don't. I don't recall. Uh, how do you find out the? If you want to look at the command line parameter options, let's try and just take a quick peek here. Let's go here. Maybe we can find out right now. So I'm going to just do a run. Mm -hmm. Wait, I haven't looked at this one for a while. Nope. Uh, so it's, this may not give us the run uh, options. We'll see. A lot of time, front slash question mark will take care of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, hopefully, and it, and it still may it ha might have to explode the MSI files because uh, the Adobe Reader is actually this setup is actually um, it's a bootstrapper. Mm -hmm. It's got it's got an exe that uh, wraps wrap. is, is effectively yeah. a wrapper around uh, some MSIs. Okay, here oh, we are. Yeah. Um, no, I don't, yeah, I don't see uh, from here where there's the ability to make it, to say I want this to be the default reader or not the default reader. It'll probably make it the default um, unless you add uh, your MSI parameters, and that's where you'd find those via Orca. If you open up an Orca, go to your property table and check out the available properties there. So, sorry, I hope that's not too so we'd unsatisfying. Be, but would we yeah. be stumped on that one? Well, I mean, it's going to be, uh, perhaps. Okay. Anyway, we kind of pointed you the right, right direction. but It is, you know. is going to depend I'll, per I'll call that a stump. Vendor. I'll call that a stump since we couldn't give them the right, exact answer. The only reason you're saying that is I think you just created a drinking game that if we're stumped, we take a drink. Oh, I like that. It's cool. Oh. Is there a way now or in the future to request a package via command line to have packages installed by request? Now, I'm reading that as you want an end user to be able to say, hey, I would like the new reader, or I would like uh, Putty. Make a request. Make a request for that. Okay, so the, the, I'm going to break that down into two questions. Um, now, no. In the future, to request, um, we are considering it. Possibly. That would, um, if we do, that would be a feature that would be included with an agent. And if we ever do an agent, then the agent is going to be optional. Um, there are some features that that people have have wanted that really do require an agent. Yeah, that's true. So we're we, you know we're we're that opens up a whole new ball game. You know, one of the cool things about PDQ software, you can install it and get running within minutes. minutes. And you now people always say you know with, like within minutes. Yeah, you could also use minutes to quantify something like you know seventy thousand minutes. Yeah. <laughs> And true, you're still true. in minutes. No, when we say minutes, we're talking three minutes. Yeah, you're deploying and yeah, as soon as you... Once you introduce an agent, uh, most likely you're introducing a central server, a SQL, like a SQL or, or an Oracle server, and, you know... Things start getting complex. And, yeah, the, you know, it just, it just goes with the complexity, the, the install time and the... So right now, no. The answer is no. Uh, in the future, perhaps. Perhaps. So uh, now there are some workarounds. If you uh, want to look at the PDQ deploy command line interface, mm -hmm. you can't make a request, but we do have users that um, use the the command line interface running PDQ deploy exe from the console. They'll 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 have like a an image server, like a fog server mm -hmm. or, or or MDT or something that will make a call. Uh, usually something like um, PS exec. To the remote, 
to, to, to the what's console. remote to them to the PDQ console mm -hmm. and run PDQ deploy, uh, and then there's a command line syntax that you can actually deploy, f you know, f uh, packages to two targets, and so. Um, we do have people I know that, that do that, do that yeah. but it's not requesting. It's just saying deploy deploy it now. So yeah, yeah. That, that you might be able to get part of your request there. You have another question? What else we got, JJ? Can PDQ deploy empty all users or a specific user's recycle bin? Well, you want to take so, this one? Yeah, it's uh, so recycle bin, right? It's a uh, it's a protected system folder, right? Which would be dollar recycle dot bin, right? I think so. Let's find out. Uh, I believe, sir. I'm almost positive. Um, we're going to go to. Um, so this is a system drive. It's mm -hmm. probably going to be on the system. Um, change that view to show uh, operating system files. Oh, there's dollar recycling. Yeah. Right, and, uh, you know what? It might change. It, it, it does. Uh, we're on Windows Seven here. It might be called uh, recycle in some other yeah. OSs. Yeah. Anyway, basically, if you go out and delete that folder. Should clean it out. Now it's again being a system folder. It'll be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, you can do that. Yeah, uh, you can't do it uh, unless the, there are some utilities out there, and mm -hmm. whether they're free or not, I don't know. There are some utilities that are meant to uh, empty the recycle bin from a command line. Mm -hmm. But like Lex was saying, you could. In fact, uh, I'll show you. Should we do it? Yeah, sure. Let's um. Let's go blow the recycle bin away. Well, well let's just make sure we're not smoking crack here. Well, time out. <laughs> You, you can't throw that up without expecting me to go, we're not smoking crack, really? Wait. Uh, but we are drinking scotch before yeah. 10 in the morning. Yes. So I'm going to open up a computer called Abraham. Let's throw, um, let's throw this into in the, trash bin. In the trash can. So now cool. you've got the recycle bin, you've got that, that PNG file. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember this, if you do, when you delete, when you delete a system, the, the recycle bin folder, it won't show up uh, on that in real time on the console. You'll still see the, the uh, trash can is full or the recycle bin is full until you open it up and it's empty. Mm -hmm. yeah. But let's do it. So we're going to go to Abraham. I'm going to do a uh, use PDQ inventory. Uh, do uh, tools, remote command. We'll test to see if this work. And is it, is, since it's a folder, you don't want to use the del command. You want to use the RD. Mm -hmm. Remove directory. And uh, I don't know that I've ever done RD without a slash S slash Q. That means uh, actually you don't need really need the slash S. Eh, it's Slash S means go all the way down mm -hmm. for all, all subdirectories, and slash Q means don't ask questions. Just do it. Mm -hmm. You can do, um, since, you're, since you're talking about, I mean, you could do C, but if C is not your system drive, then you're not, it's not going to work, mm -hmm. right? And it was dollar sign recycle bin, right? Dollar sign recycle dot bin, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. So RD recycle bin on Abraham, we'll say run. Okay, if it works, we drink. If it doesn't work, we drink. You've made this win-win. I love this game. <laughs> Check it out. I'm, I'm almost empty. I'm going to have to fill up again. Yeah, what's going on, man? That's taking a while to come back. Would you like to top that off? Either uh, way, we're going to... see. Uh, recycle bin is... Uh, directory is not empty. That's why I said slash S slash Q. Okay. Let's just see. Well, let's see. Should we open it? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it is empty. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there you go. So it is empty. Um, it didn't. It Gave only, you kind of only, an ugly opening, <laughs> only opening it up. Did you see the, the, the then refresh the icon? Mm -hmm. But yeah, that did work. Um, now, was it recreated? We should see that it gets recreated if we go back to that folder. I suck at this. <laughs> Yep. There it is. There's a recycle bin right, right yep. there. So yeah, it was recreated. Um, Once again, that was a slash that's kind S of all, slash yeah, Q. Yeah, RD, mm -hmm. RD remove directory. That's mm -hmm. kind of what you can also use RMDIR, even though that was deprecated years ago. Um, deprecated. That's the best way to delete stuff. It's Linux style, baby. <laughs> Get your Linux on. Get your Linux on. I bet, I bet there's probably going to be some Linux questions. Oh, uh, yeah. There's, that, probably will there's be got to be at least something, right? There's yeah. probably. We, we had, there was one on the forums the other day saying, how do you do this in Linux? And <laughs> Well, we, we, I mean, first of all, let's just kind of focus. We work on Windows. <laughs> we <laughs> we know, true. but we're not going to tell you. Yeah, We know, but we won't say. All right, what's the next question? My targets are often linked to a PDQ inventory collections. How do I make sure the inventory collection is updated before, before a manual or scheduled deployment? Kurt D. 
That's a great question, man. Hey, Kurt. That's a, yeah, that's a good question. I'll okay. drink to that. I'm going to find a reason to drink <laughs> okay, so, to everything. So, uh, uh, Lex is one of those guys that, that will, you know, playing basketball back in high school, you probably said, no, you can double dribble. You, you can use both hands because you change the game. on. Okay, so now Lex will drink if he's wrong or oh, yeah. right. If I'm right. Or even if a if question is, is asked. good or bad. If or at, well, let's go with asked. I like that, yeah. Why don't you just start drinking? We'll find a trace of blood in your skull. There we go. Okay. Um, so the answer, the answer to your question, I, 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 I have to call you out. Not necessarily call you out, but I want to call, him out. call out two things. So number one, <laughs> you're saying, how do I make sure they're updated? Okay, so there's two parts of that word updated. There is an inventory scan mm -hmm. that's returned that then, you know, updates the data for that computer. And then there's the actual background of PDQ inventory that processes all of the filters in your collection. So if you're talking about making sure that those are processed, that happens in the background on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. um, when you don't have a collection open, you, you know, generally speaking, that collection is going to be have, have those filters run within a few seconds because it's constantly going. Now, just so you know, um, Collections in the collection library, if you have an enterprise, uh, an active enterprise license, you have what's called the, uh, the uh, collection library. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and show the desktop there, JJ. Now, uh, it's nice. Shane, Shane maintains that. So you've got Unless the, Shane's on vacation. You've got the uh, applications. <laughs> I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down into, um, mm -hmm. well, let's look at uh, maybe Evernote. Evernote was updated today. So here you've got Evernote. You can see, if you zoom in a little bit, JJ, you can see this is the latest version of Evernote. So we're saying, show us computers that have the latest version, which is 595-9380. Mm -hmm. um, that this get those filters, these filters here, get processed every few seconds. Once you open a collection, that moves it to the front of the queue. True. Now, as far as making sure that the computers in that collection are scanned, we don't have a scan before deployment option. We have a scan after deployment, mm -hmm. and that is set in PDQ deploy. If you use deploy and inventory, mm -hmm. and you have at least pro of, of both, we recommend that you do this. In your preferences, I'm going to hit control comma. You can also go to file preferences. Go to deployments. Thank you. And then there you go, scanning. And so scanning, so that means after deployment to a computer, by default, you can change this at each package level. Again, I suggested just scan applications because you, generally your computer information is not going to change. Yeah. And keep it quick. But you could, the default, if you enable this, would be your standard scan profile. Mm -hmm. But basically, what we're, whatever whatever is entered here, after deployment, scan that computer mm -hmm. so it gets updated. Um, we don't have a feature to scan a computer before. So the answer to your question is, um, if you want to do it programmatically, uh, I, would I would set in PDQ inventory, I would set your uh, profile schedules, your scan profile schedules. Schedules, maybe you want, might want to be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. And you can do that in preferences of inventory. Go down to uh, scan profiles. And uh, let's say we want to use the standard before we were using the applications. If you edit that profile, yeah, there's your details. Remember, your details show you what scanners, mm -hmm. uh, a scan profile is merely a container of one or more scanners. Mm -hmm. So in the standard, these are the scanners that are executed. And then on your triggers, Right now, by default, on the standard scan profile, it just scans computers if they haven't had this profile scanned in seven days. It'll scan them. A question for you, man. Yeah. Is there a command line parameter, like a CLI, that can kick off to do a scanner? Yes, there is, actually. Hmm. And now that you mention it, there is a PDQ, just similar to the PDQ deploy, there is a PDQ inventory command line, it's actually PDQ inventory.exe, where you can scan uh, computers. Um, so if I guess if you really wanted to do that, could programmatically set up to, to, to run that at that point. But honestly, here's what I do. First of all, um, let's say that I want to do, I want to push out Java. Get over here to deploy. A new Java that came out yesterday, it was, a, it was an out of, uh, out, of, out, of uh, out of band. Out of band, there we mm -hmm. go. I was going to say sequence, but it isn't sequence. But. Yeah, they just updated this yesterday. So there's a new Java, Java 8 update 68, build 18, mm -hmm. or 66, build 18. Um, now, if you, sched if you have a schedule, like auto deployment or otherwise, in this schedule, you can say, don't, scan to com don't deploy to computers once they've received this successfully. That can be important mm -hmm. because if uh, you try to deploy this to the, via the schedule to the same target that's already received that version of Java, it's not going to deploy it again. 
But if you want, let's say I want to deploy this Java 8 update 66 to computers that don't have it, I would just go out maybe to your, before you deploy this, go out to your uh, Java 8, we're going to look at 32-bit. There's the old, you say you're going to deploy this to those computers, just do a quick scan. Mm -hmm. Go to collection, if you're scanning a collection, and say, we'll scan for applications. Boom. And uh, that's the way to get the updated. But is there a way, like we have the scan after, to do a scan before? No. No. So maybe set a little bit more aggressive uh, scan schedules, mm -hmm. and then, um, or, or, you know, hit this scan now. For instance, if you know that your Java deployment is going to go out at 8 p.m. one night, set your uh, scan profile to scan at 7.30. Yeah. All right, that night. And, and then you're, you're, that should you're good take to go. Care, yeah. mm -hmm. Every, that'll, that'll take care of, that will take care of your problem. So hopefully that answers it. Hey, I'll drink to that. So will you. So, good job, buddy. Okay, so we've changed it again. Yeah, new game. So you drink it. You, wrong, right, the question is asked, or the question is, is answered. Answered. Whether we're drinking, right yeah. I love it. We're drinking. We don't want to scan or install software over our VPN. That makes sense to me on a, on a whole lot of levels. Is it possible to prevent PDQ? Inventory scans or deployments inst or deploy installs based on IP address range. Okay, so uh, in, in in inventory, no. In deploy, yes, yes. Um, so in inventory, at this point, and there's actually we are going to make this where you can have uh, scans. You can have your inventory scan profiles. Right now, when you set a schedule for a scan, um, that will scan all compute attempt to mm -hmm. scan all computers in your database. We are going to uh, allow, s in, in a future release, to scan, to have schedules kick off s scan profiles against collections, mm -hmm. specific collections instead of all the computers. So you'll be able to do that if you have collections that filter based off of IP. Now for deploy, the answer is yes, but keep in mind that once you set this, it's system wide. Yeah. If I understand your question, which I'm already so some scotch into it, so I may not. You scotched up a little bit? Yeah. Good for you. Um, if you go into preferences, probably something that most of you haven't, uh, a panel that you haven't gone to, target filters. Now, the reason for the target filters, we have exclusions, we have inclusions. I think maybe two of our customers use inclusions. We yeah. put that there just for symmetry, really. Exclusions mean I don't ever want to scan computers that match this. So let's Excuse me, deploy. deploy. Deploy, my brother. Deploy. Thank you very much. Once again, Scotch. So let's say uh, token. We, you guys see us reference the computer token. Yeah. It's a file server. Let's say I don't ever want to scan token. I can just enter that and now, or sorry, scan. Deploy to token. Now, if I ever try to deploy to token, notice I'm going to use the test. I'm not going to actually commit this with uh, <laughs> Some Java point. because, you know. It's a good job, man. Yeah, I don't trust. test, yeah. Uh, the, the, what better way to say, Shane, you don't trust your software, do you? I do. I'm going to hit token. The test generally, our test just runs a dir, D-I-R. Yeah. So, so yeah, failed. failed. If you look at the reason, computer has been, been excluded. excluded by a target filter. All right. Um, now, to answer so, your question, though, for the IP range, if you don't want to specify computer names in there. Let's, uh, let's add, um, when you get that up, let's do, uh, we try to keep our servers on part of a range. So let's uh, do a... Uh, Anything that's at 10.0.7.0 slash 24. Okay. So to do your range now, this mm -hmm. is what you would do for the IP address pool for your VPNs. Mm -hmm. You'd do, so let's just say once again, it's 10.0. Uh, 10 I suck. 10.0.7.0. <laughs> seven. Seven. And then 24. 24. Anything so, on a 7 range. Yeah. So that means that <coughs> anything that's in 10.0.7.x. So, so mm -hmm. you know, 1 through 254. Add that. Once you add that, you're going to see that it's a, it shows the subnet. Mm -hmm. Now, if you try to deploy to any computer that has that has an address in that range, you're going to get the same error saying uh, you know the, this computer was excluded by um, a target filter. So, add that for your subnet, and that will prevent deployments. That won't prevent scans. But uh, honestly, if I had to make a choice, do I want to deploy or do I want to scan? If I had to choose one. On a, on, a, on a VPN or something across a slow link, I would choose scan. Scan, yeah. Yeah. But uh, like I say, there's going to be, uh, we're going to add a feature where you can, you know, exclude, exclude based, uh, at least schedules based off of um, specific collections. So you yep. have a collection that excludes those. Cool. Hey, 
you need a drink for that one too. Oh, let's go ahead and delete Good that. Good job, so buddy. That, yeah, let's do it. So that <laughs> so when we try to delete, when we try to deploy something. Next like, time we do a webcast, we try to deploy something like, oh, it didn't work. Software Dang. sucks. Dang. All right, what's the next question? What do we got? From David. That one's I yours. have a short DHCP lease. This causes the same IP address to be... Oh, uh, and, and Annalisa, I, you had mentioned that there were some questions that you had to really reword because they were very, very lengthy. Um, is, I, is this one of them that you were saying? There was a lease one. She's, she's saying yes. Okay. She's shaking her head yes. Yeah. All we right. Don't, we don't so put her on. For Actually, to, to, quote her, to quote her, she said yes completely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. All right. So, so some of you may say, I think I asked that question, yeah, but I didn't use those like words. Mine, yeah. Number one, we have to use things that are monosyllabic so that Lex will understand them. That is true. Uh, that and is also, so I think true. we're, we're limited it's, to that. We'll say. It's okay, not so. you, it's Lex. It, hey, easy, easy. It's got to fit on the screen, okay? <laughs> I have a short DHCP <laughs> lease. This Sorry to hear about that. The same IP address to be registered to more than one computer. So DNS mm. thinks there are multiple computers on the same address. This causes issues. Is there anything I can do to make it easier to manage? Mm. All right, so you're talking about, uh, let's say you've got a computer, computer A, that uh, gets a particular IP address. And then it's... Uh, it goes, got, up, yeah. goes offline. Somebody else, two hours later, picks up that same IP. Mm. Boom. And But uh, depending on how you have DHCP working with DNS, DNS, yeah. you, DNS could have two computer records that have the same IP address. So if you try to deploy to both of those computers, one will get it, one won't. So first thing, set your scavenging. Yeah, Scavenging is important, especially... When you have very aggressive D, and when we say scavenging, it's not a PDQ feature. That is a DNS feature. Yeah. Um, if you ha if you have to have a short DHCP lease, which is obviously it's it's very common. Um, it's very common for uh, you know, companies that have significant number of laptops out in the field. Yeah, more computers than they have available IP addresses. Yeah. Now, in the world of NAT, uh, you know you might want to to ultimately to fo to solve this change your subnet mask mm -hmm. to allow more, um, you know, more nodes on a network. Sure. You're probably using a, a, a classic class C subnet. Um, anyway, this is still something that has to happen in DNS because uh, PDQ products, you know, we look at DNS truly as, as the authoritative figure. Yeah. Um, now, if a record, if we say, you know, if PDQ inventory says scan the computer called Homer, and DNS has no record for Homer, then we will fall back to NetBIOS, and hopefully the Windows browsing will be able to find it. That's yep. a fallback only if the record doesn't exist. However, if Homer exists but has an incorrect IP address, there's not much we can do about it because because yeah. we're saying DNS. Do you have do you have something for Homer? Yes, I do, and here's the IP address. So, the an to answer your question, yes, I would uh, do what Lex suggested, and, and that is. Um, get a fairly aggressive scavenging uh, system set up in DNS so that, you know, these stale addresses get deleted. Quickly. Quickly, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, here's our last one for the day, man. Oh, this is the last one? This is the last one. Oh, we should drink to that, did, too. Did you hear it? Did, did I? Did you hear it was last? This is the last one. Yeah, we were, we got time we're wrapping up on time, so. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't. I don't give a shit. Okay. Yeah, we can do. If we there's can do. questions, let's ask them. I don't care. All okay. Right. How do I create a dynamic collection more. that includes or excludes computers that have SSD hard drives? I want to target SSD based computers to turn off defrag schedules, mm. indexing, et cetera. Chad. All right. Well, um, obviously, uh, you can, you know, in inventory. So you're, you're, you're approaching this in the right way. However, keep in mind, there is not a flag, uh, or at least a universal flag. Um, to, to determine a drive as SSD. Yeah, to determine yeah. a drive as SSD. So what you're what you're looking at is you're kind of at the mercy of the vendor. True. If the vendor places, and I believe it's model name, let's find out. Let's create a report. Um, and now we, we're going to use a report just so we can see this, but you would do this the same filters in a collection. So let's do this. Let's do um, new report, basic. All right. So we're going to say. SSD. Um, we'll show computer. Now we're going to choose uh, the. Com we'll do the computer name, but we're going to choose the um, disk drive. Disk drive. All right, and we're going to say uh, I believe it's the. Is it the model? Let's take a look at model, and let's also take a look at um, from disk drive also. We're going to go to logical disk. Logical disk. Let's and I make this down because logical disk. You can say. 
um, is this system. Okay. Okay, so maybe, maybe we'll, we'll uh, let's say you want to do this um, just on your system drive, not on any data drives out there, because you know every system has to have, every Windows system has to have a system, system drive. drive. Yeah. So we'll nail that down. Let's run this real quick and see. All right, so now I'm going to look for, in the, in the disk drive model, you look for the flag SSD. Once again, you're at the mercy of the vendor of the vendor of the of this disk. If you see SSD in there, you know you can be fairly confident. But I'm going to tell you this: you don't. Let's put it this way: I would, I would bet Lex's leg. I wouldn't bet mine. Who? <laughs> um, if you can say if the disk model contains the string SSD, it's an SSD drive. So uh, these are the. You probably catch 90%, maybe a little more, but mm -hmm. yeah. It's so let's do this. I'm going to create, oops, pardon me. So I'm going to create a filter to say, show me any computer, the computer name, or the um, disk drive model. Contains SSD. Mm -hmm. Contains SSD. And let's see if we can do this one too. Well, first of all, before we do that, let's always just check to make sure that we're getting that what we're, we want to see. Okay, so this gives us th those that have SSD, and um, they're all true. So you can see, but let's, if you wanted to, you could also say and under logical disk, the uh, is system is true. Yeah. Okay, so this will give us only those computers. Uh, no, you might actually have to have. Yeah, yeah going to have to have a separate filter for that one. So we'll remove that. You'd create two groups and mm -hmm. then one in each. Okay, that's cool. So SSD, disk drive model contains SSD. That's the filter. Did I smoke crack here? What's going on? <laughs> I'm not sure. It looks like it should work. Oh, uh, SSD. There we there go. We go. <laughs> I suck. Yeah, pay attention, guys. <laughs> That's so that what might we actually, should that, do, right? That might actually work on the other way where we have yeah. uh, whatever. Okay, so this, this will work now. How do I say that we don't want them to have SSD? Really quick, I, now I am thinking that that, that would have worked. So we're going to change that back to you're gonna, logical. You're going to prove that, huh? I'll drink to that. Well, it kind of pisses me off. I'll drink to that, too. Is true. All right. Save it. We don't have that filter running. Good. So now, um, what you'd want to do now, you could... Let's make sure, let's do this. So we see Blockhead and Fry. So I just want to make sure, we're assuming most people, most of their machines are going to have the OS, the system disk on their SSD because it's quick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to duplicate this okay. and I'm going to change this to SS, uh, no SSD, uh, uh, no SSD on system. All right. And then we're going to say all has to be true, system is true, and the model, we'll try this. Uh, does not contain. Now we can do this because does not contain because there's only going to be one system drive. If there, there could be multiple system drives, this would not work. Yeah. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So at this point, you can say. Mm -hmm. does there we not go. Contain. So we don't see the same computers. So what you could do now, you've got this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, new collection from report. No SSD on system. What we're doing now is saying cr take the filters from this report and automatically create a collection. There we go. And it's going to be placed on the root of your tree here. And now you can see these are the computers. And I know that, um, for example, mention. Yep, there is no, oh, there is. Hold on. No SSD on system. So maybe mentions system. Disk drives. Thank you. There's the system. Oh, see, check it out. We got the non system drive here. Yeah, but that should not be system. So, okay, so what we're going to want to do, okay, so just to be on the safe side, we're going to change this to say it contains SSD. Right now, that's going to show us the SSD computers. Mm -hmm. All right. And mention since it does have multiple. All right, so now we're going to change this, though, and say... Not any. Mm -hmm. Well, we can say not all. Not all, yeah. There we go and mention leaves, those other ones leave. So, so you, once again, be, just, just we've gone to this group filter and said, I mean, these filters are still running. Grab me Find all me the computers everything. that yep. have SSD. The system drive is true. Mm -hmm. um, but we're saying, okay, now give us all the computers Negate that, that aren't in that Give me list. the rest of the, yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll answer your question. And once again, you're at the mercy of the vendor. vendor.
Yeah. Come on, JJ, there's got to be another question. We got one more? Oh, time for scotch. <laughs> Is it possible to send deployment reports with the output logs? No. No. Well, that was a quick answer. I'll drink to that. The, the, so the will report, JJ. JJ, reports, drink to that, buddy. The reports can send the, the error messages, um, but the output logs are actually stored. Um, when, so let's, let's go out. We'll just do a quick Java here. Launch that to Ragnar, so I don't have to do it later. Ragnar, Abraham. All right, so we're going to deploy this. So what you're talking about, um, the output, so, the output logs that you see now. Some not not all steps will have logs. The we the the requirement is if it's an MSI step, we will pass the MSI uh, slash log parameter, so it creates it. And we look if it's an MSI, we look for a file called output.log, and then mm -hmm. we read that and store that. Um, if if however. Uh, if it's not an MSI, then whatever is executed has to return to standard out. So here, killing browsers, you know, we're, we're throwing that out to standard out. We're, we're grabbing whatever is, is thrown out. Um, so some steps won't have it. Can we have that output log set? No, that is actually, these are actually stored. Um, these are actually stored on the console machine. Yep. And let's see if I can find them. Yeah. Deployment output. So it's in your app data uh, or program data. Big difference, not app data. Program data, uh, admin arsenal arsenal to deploy, deploy. deployment output. These are compressed files that are, are, are decompressed and read into your console as you click them. Mm -hmm. um, this stuff is not in your database. It would make your database, to try to throw huge. all this in there, it can huge, make your database huge. very, very large. The deployment reports don't have access to this. Um, so it, the deployment reports cannot send these. So sorry, it's it really and it's really meant for troubleshooting purposes. Um, so where you can say, oh, something failed. I want to go in there if there's an output log, and and you can you know do some do some troubleshooting. But for reports, no, you can sorry. only send the status. No more questions. All right. Camera two. Well, if you did ask, if you did have a question that. You know, we attempted to answer. <laughs> attempted. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, and I guess you'll be getting some stuff from Annalisa. And um, I found out, I found out actually she also goes by Annie. No kidding. Yeah, she was talking to the Utah Business Magazine, and apparently some of them were like, Annalisa. She's like, yeah, I did that going through school or something. She told me today. And she's like, you can call me Annie. Hmm. I didn't know that. I'm, I'm going to start, start calling, calling her Annie. Yeah. yeah, I think Annie's awesome. I would agree. All right, anyway. That's a neither here nor there. Annie will be sending you uh, some swag, probably some scotch glasses or something like that. Not the scotch glasses. Empty that ones. We, that we drink Empty out ones, of. yes, of course. But mm. so. All right. If you have any more questions, by all means, ask Lex. Yeah, hit the forums and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, I'm Shane. I'm Lex. You guys have a good one. Rock on. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today, and thank you so much for all the great questions. Really sorry that we couldn't get to all of them with the short time that we have together. Um, but if you do want an answer to your questions, there's always the support site, support.adminarsenal.com. And uh, if you had a question that was featured, do email me at webcast at adminarsenal.com so I can get you hooked up with our lovely PDQ shot glass or whiskey tumbler. No webcast next week, but we'll see you guys the week after that. Talk to you later. <laughs>